week of Trinity 20, Saturday, Jesus, the chief priests, Lazarus, and you. And Saul cast the spear, for he said, I will pin David to the wall. But David evaded him twice. 1 Samuel 18, verse 11. Dearly beloved, how far Saul had fallen. David was a loyal friend and a great help to Saul. Yet when the Holy Spirit departed from Saul, all logic, common sense, and reason left as well. Saul spit out a venomous resolve and attempted to kill David. The reeking depths of sin and wickedness that combine with the heights of man's pride and hatred are demonstrated in the following section of the Gospel text for today. Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake alone, but that they might also see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priest plotted in order also to put Lazarus to death, because, on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. John 12, verses 9 through 11. These chief priests knew that Lazarus had died and was in the tomb four days. They knew that Jesus had raised him from the dead and that this was a work that only God could do. Jesus defeated death. In short, these chief priests knew that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. They knew the truth and yet lived the lie. They had come to the point where they couldn't live without the lie. Having already resolved to eliminate Jesus, these chief priests would defend their error by plotting the death of Lazarus. Here are a couple points of application for you. First, you are a living Lazarus. You were spiritually dead, and you have been raised from the dead by the word of Christ. As the enemies of Jesus sought to silence him, so you are hated by the forces of evil, both the demons of darkness and the men of the lie. Continue to commend yourself into the hands of the living God and remain steadfast in faith. Second, know that within you is the capability of rejecting the truth, falling away from Christ, and living the lie yourself. Be on your guard that you do not resist and reject the work of the Holy Spirit through his means of grace. God does not and will not force you into heaven. While it may be a sudden event that takes a soul away from Christ, it may also happen because of a long, gentle slide into laxness and lukewarmness. This may actually result in a loathing of God's gracious gospel and a deadly hatred of Christ. Instead, hear the word of God and remain resolute in true doctrine. Hear the law accuse you. Confess your sins. Make continual use of the means of grace to calm your fears and strengthen your soul. Pray that the Lord would continue to abide in you. Ask him to help you grow in faith and godliness. Surely he will answer your prayers to do so. He will keep you close to himself. Jesus will lead you through the tribulations and trials of this life and into paradise. Prayer. Almighty and most merciful God, who has appointed us to endure sufferings and death with our Lord Jesus Christ before we enter with him into eternal glory, Grant us grace at all times to subject ourselves to your holy will and to continue steadfast in the true faith unto the end of our lives, and at all times to find peace and joy in the blessed hope of the resurrection of the dead and of the glory of the world to come. Turn the hearts of those who are enemies of your gospel, bring them to a saving knowledge of the living God, and gather them into your church by your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hymn 265, stanzas 2 and 4. Their craft and pomp indeed are great, and of their power they boast and prate. Our hope they scornfully deride, and deem us nothing in their pride. That thou art with us, Lord, proclaim, and put our enemies to shame. Confound them in their haughtiness, and help thine own in their distress.